Good morning. It's Monday, December 13th. Thanks for stopping by for Top Story. Take a second to like and subscribe below. Well, we're giving you a little treat today. We'd like to share the full World Watch show with you. Give it a watch and share it with a friend. Now, enjoy World Watch on Top Story. This view from a drone flying the same path through the sky that a devastating tornado had taken the day before. One of a swarm of dozens of twisters that moved through six U.S. states on Saturday, destroying homes and businesses in Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Tennessee, Illinois, and Kentucky. But as bad as this destruction looks, it doesn't tell the worst of the story. 70 people of 110 people inside this candle factory were unaccounted for and likely killed when the twister reduced the building to rubble in Mayfield, Kentucky. Powerful twisters are unusual for this cooler time of year, but Governor Andy Bashir said Saturday's tornadoes were the most destructive in his state's history. They're gonna lose a whole lot of people. One block from my grandparents' house, there's no house standing. There's no house standing and we don't know where all those people are. Starbucks workers waited for election results, but they didn't have to wait long. There were only 27 ballots to count. In 1908, the workers at a Buffalo, New York Starbucks voted to be represented by a union. Another location in the city voted unionization down and a third was undecided, but it was the win that made the headlines. Buffalo in its history was always a very unionized town and that has changed over the last several decades. Just a few shops, but closely watched votes. In today's labor shortage, businesses are desperate. So workers are feeling their oats, willing to change jobs and now may be more bold about joining unions. The new union will negotiate a labor contract with Starbucks and its terms could set a standard that other employers end up having to match. Inflation surged to 6.8% in the month of November, according to the U.S. Labor Department's Consumer Price Index, which tracks the cost of a sample basket of goods and services. We haven't seen a jump like this since 1982. The main culprits, energy, food, and shelter. Energy prices were up a third over the year, prices at the pump up by half, and the price of housing is the highest we've seen since 2007. Food is up. No surprise as farmers also pay more for things like feed. It was about like $16 a bag and right now it's at, it depends on where you go, where we're getting it. It's about like 22. Economists see a glimmer of hope though. Shipping backlogs and prices are easing and gas prices are expected to drop below $3 a gallon in the new year. New Zealand is working on a law to ban young people from ever buying cigarettes in their lifetime. One of the world's toughest crackdowns on the tobacco industry. It's part of the smoke-free Odotoroa 2025 action plan, aiming to ban all smoking by 2025. According to the World Health Organization, smoking is responsible for more than 8 million deaths each year worldwide, with around 1 million of those from secondhand exposure. Only Bhutan is more strict, banning smoking outright. For kids who turned 14 in 2027, from that point on, here's what that means. They and future generations will never legally be able to purchase tobacco because the truth is there is no safe age to start smoking. What is the gospel? Be ready to give an answer to one of the most important questions of your faith. Register now for the renowned youth conference at Voice College. Wow, that is a lot of lettuce, Hannah. Are you getting ready for a potluck? Oh, this isn't for me, Brian. This is manatee food. Sea cows, as they're also called, eat all kinds of greens, like seagrass and algae, but they'll also gobble up lettuce and cabbage. Florida's manatees are in trouble, and environmental officials have decided to do something about it. Their plan involves lots and lots of lettuce. More on that in just a bit. For years, manatees were on the endangered species list. 
Many were injured or killed by boat propellers, so Florida established no-wake manatee zones. And by 2017, sea cow numbers had rebounded enough to improve their status to threatened. But these marine mammals are still in danger because pollution is destroying their food supply. Runoff from farms and sewage causes the growth of blue-green algae, which steals sunlight from underwater seagrasses, and the underwater salad bar is where sea cows dine. With their food supply depleted, the manatees are starving. More than a thousand of them died this year. This is where the lettuce lunch plan comes in. Now, typically, it's not a good idea to feed wildlife, but the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is making an exception. They're planning to feed loads of lettuce and cabbage to the manatees near the Florida Power and Light Plant in Cape Canaveral. They picked that location because the manatees will naturally migrate to waters warmed by the plant's cooling water discharge. To carry out the project, they're going to need a lot of food. One manatee can eat anywhere from 30 to 100 pounds in a day. Now, this doesn't mean that the general public is supposed to start tossing lettuce into the ocean to feed the manatees. That's still illegal. It's better to leave it up to the wildlife officials. So I guess the whole World Watch team will be eating this leftover lettuce for lunch today. The age-old struggle of mismatched socks is now a functional fashion. An entrepreneurial spark led to 10-year-old Dasha Kushnetseva's product, a box of single socks. That's right, not pairs of socks, but single and storytelling socks. Her mother believes the success of single socks comes from a little bit of good luck and a lot of Dasha's charm. Last year at Silicon Valley Camp's Startup School for Children, Dasha brainstormed her single sock idea as an attack for busy families to use against the pesky house Nissies snatching their socks. These are household elves who live, for example, between a wardrobe and a wall where there's a gap, and what ends up there gets into the houses of the Nissies. Single socks earned Dasha a second place finish at the school and a desire to see them on the feet of her classmates. Each box is like a time capsule from the year with major global events designed by Dasha into 26 different socks. The colorful sock threads of the 2021 collection detail anything from the withdrawal of American troops in Afghanistan to the blockage of the Suez Canal. And if you lose one, simply pick a new one to mismatch with. If Dasha had to pick her own themes, she's designed from games, cartoons, and even stories about McDonald's. How one dude bought a Happy Meal but didn't feel happy, then he sued McDonald's. Moscow's Virtuoso factory stepped in to take on the challenge of production, and they're hustling to keep up with orders. We hardly had time to make this batch. Pre-orders have already been made. Almost everything has been sold. We do not have time to pack and release now. You might want to order a box before the Nissies find their way into your sock drawer. Cutter is supplying everything for the 2022 World Cup Stadium, all the way down to the very blades of grass for each pitch. And that's no easy task in the desert. What we have here is one of the best grass in the world. We reached this point by doing a lot of testing and experiment in the R&D center. So all the turf that you see here, we tried like 36 different kinds of species. The locally grown stadium greenery is all part of Cutter's quest for a sustainable carbon neutral tournament. The grass begins growing in fields with specially treated water before being carved into sheets and rolled up like rugs. And of course, it'll need to be football tested and approved. Here's something you don't see every day, a phantom jellyfish. A robot for the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute caught video of the elusive jelly that's 33 feet long. Those, we'll say mouth arms, sticking out the bottom are responsible for its true scientific name, Stygiomedusa giganteum. Understandable for its resemblance to Medusa, the character from Greek mythology. This creature was first discovered in 1899, but have only been seen 110 times in 110 years. Not surprising, since it tends to live as deep as 21,900 feet, and most commonly in an area known as the Twilight Zone, which is too deep for most light to reach. Not a lot is known of the Stygio Medusa, because it's difficult to find in its natural habitat, and when it's brought to the surface, its silky looking frame turns into a gelatinous goo. 
Hey everyone, thanks for watching and we hope your plans lead to a blessed Christmas celebration and break. Just to let you know, World Watch will have three Christmas themed shows, December 20th, 21st and 22nd. Then the staff will enjoy a break and we'll see you back in the new year. I'm the Big Bash everybody. Remember, whatever the news, the purpose of the Lord will stand. Ouch! Ow! Hey! Stop that! Ow! Knock it off!